everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity to chat with you. I'm the grants coordinator for the Clean Water Initiative Program for the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. And before that, I was district manager for the Winooski Natural Resource Conservation District, planning and implementing buffer planting projects. So this is a subject near and dear to my heart. Uh, today, I really want to chat about, and I hope it is not um, too redundant for most of you, just some updates about what we've been doing with Act 76 that's rolled out and some of the implications for you all in where and how to access funding for riparian restoration work coming from the state moving um, into, into the future. So I thought I'd do a brief five minutes on current funding. Many of you are probably already aware of that, so I won't take too long. Then I want to dive um, maybe about 10 minutes into how Act 76 is changing the structure of our funding coming out of our program. Talk a little bit about the timing of when we expect this change to happen, some opportunities for you all to engage in this process and some key takeaways, and then leave some time, maybe five or 10 minutes for questions at the end. So starting with current state what funding we have, you uh, may or may not be aware of the Clean Water Initiative Program. We get all of our money from what we call the Clean Water Budget. So this is a beautiful picture of the Clean Water Budget process. The Clean Water Board is an entity uh, shown by these really important board chairs up top. Um, and basically they get a bunch of money from the Clean Water Fund and capital dollars and federal American Rescue Plan Act dollars this year, and they get some public input and they decide how they're gonna distribute these funds into uh, different projects like um, agency programs and how they're gonna do natural resource, agriculture, stormwater, clean water projects. It's a year long process. So they started last October in developing a budget. They got some public input. Um, they develop sort of a finalized recommendation. The governor in January proposed this budget to the legislature. And right now the legislature is reviewing it to be ready starting in July um, to go live. And so us as our program, we at the same time, we're sort of figuring out what money we might be getting and then uh, preparing our spending plan and communicating that out to the public. So this is a snippet from our current spending plan, our state fiscal year 22 spending plan, which started last July and goes through this June. These are initiatives that you're probably very familiar with that seem very relevant for riparian restoration. So we are funding a dam removal design implementation block grant for you have access to. We have our usual design implementation block grant, which funds natural resource design and implementation work, things like rest wetlands restoration, floodplains restoration, stream bank restoration. Um, we have a river corridor easement set of master contracts. So these entities are great to bring out to a project if you think your project could benefit from an easement. Um, we have a woody buffer block grant. You heard about that from Watersheds United Vermont and Natural Resource Conservation Council. And we also have a project development block grant which supports practitioners and implementers that need a little bit of time to maybe talk to a landowner and get them on board or figure out what the permitting needs are and just scope your project. So we don't individually give those, those funds out to folks anymore. We do it through what we call these block grant programs. So certainly follow up with these entities. They have their own granting rounds, um, but they're how you can access these funds for your riparian restoration projects in the current state. And then these budgets here may not quite align with what you see in our public facing spending plan because it's sort of our total dollars that we've most recently allocated into an agreement or an amendment, and that might include old money. So it's not exactly just our state fiscal year $22. But that's current state. And these are the kinds of, this, this is how we've been funding stuff in the past for riparian restoration and these weird block grant project types or programs. Um, and we've had very specific project types that you're, you're probably aware have to have a clean water benefit. And the reason it has to have a clean water benefit, all of these projects, is that that's required in statute. So basically our entire purpose is our initiative. We need to finance things to make us come in compliance with the Vermont water quality standards. And the Clean Water Board, that entity that kind of gets all the money and figures out where it goes, they need to make recommendations that will achieve the greatest water quality gain. So that's sort of what colors the types of projects we fund and the programs that we're designing. But Act 76 has sort of introduced some interesting nuance. 
um, created new grant programs and created a prioritization scheme and new, um, new priorities that have helped us maybe shift a little bit away from a strict focus on sediment and nutrient reduction, which sort of opens up some opportunities for you all in um, what you might want to get funded. So shifting gears into, okay, how is Act 76 changing this? We have these old block grant programs. What's Act 76 doing to state money? Um, this is, again, the two big pieces I think to focus on is that there are new grant programs and there's a new prioritization for that funding coming from Act 76. So these bolded and starred lines are the new grant programs that Act 76 has created. So they created this water quality restoration formula grant calling it formula grant for fun, uh, water quality enhancement grants, called enhancement grants, um, municipal stormwater implementation grants, and developed lands implementation grants. And so what I've highlighted in orange are the things that I think are most relevant for you all for riparian restoration. There is this inspection, verification, operation, and maintenance. Line item two, it's not a new grant program, but the statute basically says you must fund this under formula grant. So now there's funding money to go back and improve your buffer planting if you got funded through formula grants. Um, there's also, this is also called inspection verification operation maintenance. So there's sort of a whole new blossoming of um, inspection work that's gonna be happening. And I'll dive into that in just a little bit. The tiers on the left are basically the new prioritization scheme. So the good news is all the orange stuff is top tier. It's top priority, this repair and restoration stuff. Um, and you can see that more on the next slide. Don't be intimidated. I know it's a huge Excel spreadsheet, but I just wanted to show you this for you. This is the budget that's being presented to the legislature that they're reviewing right now. This is the clean water budget that the governor proposed. And it's basically broken up into the top stuff is all tier one, high priority. The middle stuff's tier two, middle priority. And then there's lower priority in this like fun other category. And there are these arrows that are just showing top priority means you're getting the biggest percentage of this full budget. You're getting 58% of the budgets all going towards this top priority stuff. And I'm going to dive into these line items that I've highlighted. So again, showing you riparian restoration is top priority. And over 12 million is going starting this coming year. So it's it's almost it's almost doubling the amount of money that we've been putting towards this, at least from our program's perspective, the Clean Water Initiative program's perspective. So diving a little bit into the new programs, these formula grants, you may be tracking this very closely and may know this better than I do, but basically formula grants are a formula. Uh, they're focused in, they're looking at each basin in the watershed and saying, okay, how much, how much phosphorus can we get reduced based on regulations? And then what's left? What do we still need to reduce the phosphorus by to be able to meet the total maximum daily loads for Lake Champlain and Lake Mount for Magog? So it takes the total phosphorus that we need to reduce that are, that's voluntary, that we can't get through regulation, and then we're multiplying it by how much we think that'll cost to get us there. Um, so that might vary based on land use sector. There's a lot of nuance there, but that's basically um, the concept, right? It's a formula, you're calculating this times this equals this. Great, that's the amount of money. We're gonna give it to each of these little basins. And the focus is gonna be on phosphorus reduction right now. It'll eventually be some other pollutants and pollutant reduction. There are things called clean water service providers, which are sort of entities by basin that will receive the formula grants, get advised by their basin water quality council, and then administer those grants towards projects. Um, they might implement the projects themselves, or they may separate out to other implementers, other practitioners to do non-regulatory clean water projects that have a phosphorus reduction value. So this could be floodplain or wetland restoration, buffer planting projects, lakeshore projects, all of these things that you're familiar with and that you might be implementing are definitely going to very likely be eligible under these formula grants. But the focus is gonna be on this pollutant reduction potential. These formula grants will fund everything from assessments and ID through implementation. And like I mentioned, there's this operation maintenance inspection separate pool of money Formula grants in total are basically designed to create assurances to the EPA that we're gonna meet our total maximum daily load because these are voluntary projects. And so we can say, hey, EPA, we've got all these regulations, but what are we gonna to do to get the rest of that phosphorus? We're giving money towards it. We're giving them towards formula grants and we're 
prioritizing projects based on their um, potential to reduce cost or risk. And part of that investment, that's why there's an operation and maintenance investment as well, because we want to make sure that what we've installed is going to continue to have that pollutant reduction value over time. So there's going to be funds available. And I just want to flag this for folks who might be interested to kind of gain some specialization in inspecting clean water projects to make sure that they're continuing to have a useful life um, or uh, maintaining those projects over time. So there are trainings being planned and tools being planned and the clean water service providers may do this work themselves or they may want to contract out for people to go inspect all the projects that have been installed, um, go visit all those old buffer plantings, go maintain some of those old buffer plantings. And so it's something to flag for you all as a new funding pot and potentially a new opportunity for uh, uh, specialization. So big picture formula grants implications, the fund administrators, like I said, will be the clean water service providers advised by their councils. That means for you all, depending on your project and where it's located, you're gonna to have to apply to those clean water service providers for the funds. And they each may have different solicitation rounds. Um, they might coordinate together to make that really helpful for you all that work statewide, but they might not. And so that might mean for you all to be keeping track of all of them when they have their open grant rounds and when you need to apply. The other thing I wanna flag is that I think most all of them are contemplating a pre-qualification process, and that might start to get off the ground in the next few months. And a pre-qualification is if they want, if you propose a project and they want to be able to fund it, um, they might be looking to entities to manage the grant who are already pre-qualified to manage clean water projects. So if you are interested in proposing projects to um, clean water service providers and <clears throat> managing those projects, I would recommend you pay attention to these pre-qualification calls that are coming out in the next few months um, so that you can participate. The geographic focus currently for formula grants is just gonna be Lake Champlain and Lake Memphremagog, but Act 76 certainly contemplates it um, expanding statewide over the next few years. Again, it's non-regulatory clean water projects with a heavy focus on phosphorus reduction. The funding levels are 7 million right now for formula grants and 210,000 for the operation maintenance. They will be re-upped every year with different amounts of money, hopefully more amounts of money. And there are some pending tools and trainings to be aware of. So there is a phosphorus treatment calculator that DEC is working on improving so that if you have a potential project and you wanna figure out how much phosphorus it might reduce, um, there'll be some tools available for you to calculate that. And that's also gonna be available to the clean water service provider. We're also thinking about uh, making available some costing rates so that you can look at your practice type or project and say, how does this stack up against you know, other projects that have been funded in the past? Is this really, a, really expensive in terms of dollar per pound of phosphorus or is this really cost competitive? Is this really likely to get funded because it's very cost competitive? Um, there's some 101 video trainings coming from the basin planners about what is a TMDL. So there's a slew of stuff coming out and you can certainly join our listserv. I provide a link to that a little bit later on to, to stay up to date on those trainings. In terms of timing, we're hoping to get the grants executed with the clean water service providers by this July when they turn around and um, then solicit proposal suggestions. Project, project proposals from all of you is sort of to be determined by the different clean water service providers. Dan, do you have a question? You're muted. Just to follow up when you're done. Okay, thanks, Dan. Water quality enhancement grants. Um, so the majority of Act 76 text is all about formula grants. And there's like one paragraph about enhancement grants and this is it uh, in orange for you. So you can read through it. It's It's got a big charge. Uh, it's funding projects uh, to protect high quality waters, maintain or improve water quality, restore degraded or stressed streams, create resilient watersheds, support public use and enjoyment. It's a lot of stuff it's supposed to try and do, but really the big picture, it's also supporting non-regulatory clean water projects, such as floodplain and wetland restoration, tree buffer plantings, yada, yada. So my main point is that there's a huge overlap between this and formula grants in terms of what's eligible. We are working with um, a group of external stakeholders to refine some guidance about what falls under here versus what falls under formula grants, but it is another big funding pot for you all to be aware of. <coughs> 
coming down, um, coming down from the state, excuse me. So what are some implications for you for enhancement grants? We're leaning towards this being more block grant administrative, so very similar to our current grants. So you all, if you want to get funding this way, would need to follow the block grant holders in terms of their solicitation for proposals. They may each have different solicitation timelines and things like that. The opportunity for enhancement grants will be statewide. Um, the prioritization is not going to be heavily focused on pollutant reduction or phosphorus reduction, but it may vary based on whether your project is inside a basin that also has the availability of formula grants or is outside of those basins. And that's to be determined and part of what we're working um, through with our external stakeholders in our subgroup. There's um, 5 million that's going to be available in this first year. And there, we're thinking about developing some training around how to identify and account for a lot of the co-benefits as we look at this grant to move away from the focus or emphasis of phosphorus reduction and pollutant reduction. Target timing, we're hoping to put out requests for proposals for block grant holders in the second half of this year with a money available to implementers and practitioners potentially next spring, depending on when those contracts get signed. So talking about timing for you all to be aware of, I guess the big picture is really so you're aware that there's significant overlap and there might be some confusion. We have all these current block grants, Woody Buffer, Project Development, DAM and Regular Design and Implementation block grants, and they're going to have some money over the next few years, closing out at the latest 2024, although they might commit funds sooner than that. Um, so I would follow each block grant holder to understand when they actually have funds. But the point is that they're funding very similar, if not identical, project types through that money. At the same time, we'll be launching and holding up formula grants and then enhancement grants. So we're really working to align and help um, foster some dialogue between the current block grant holders, new block grant holders, clean water service providers, so that over this transition time period, they can all very clearly communicate to you all as practitioners where you should be applying, where it makes the most sense. So you're not wasting your time sort of running around chasing all of these different pots of funds. There's a lot of funds that are going to be out there, and the onus is going to be on us to work with these partners to make that clear to you all um, what makes sense for your project. So stay tuned is really my point there. So how to engage and some key takeaways. Um, I think first and foremost, your basin planner is a great link to discuss potential projects. They really are a key gaper, gatekeeper from the perspective of DEC in reviewing projects for their potential for um, suitability for funds from the state. And they really help say, yes, this is a great project. We should be adding it to the Watersheds Project database and should be on everyone's radar for future funding opportunities. So this link here, which is part of my slew of links I'll share at the end of this presentation, will get you to um, a page that you could get to the Watershed Projects database. But I wanted to highlight the Water Quality Project Screening Tool. If you click on this and indicate the location of your project, you'll find out who your technical basin planner is if you don't yet know, and they're a great contact for you. Um, Act 76 is developing some guidance around clean water service providers and formula grants, and there is an external stakeholder steering committee that meets pretty regularly and a bunch of different subgroups. So that link there is going to be the website to Act 76, where you can peruse some old meeting minutes. Um, there's also a lot of entities in this meeting um, that participate there. So I, I know that there's certainly some regional planning commissions here that participate in Act 76. Um, Watersheds United Vermont and the Natural Resource Conservation Council participate on the steering committee. So if there's if those are entities that um, you interact with regularly, they may be a great resource for you to bring questions to or also comments or concerns that they can then bring to the steering committee. Um, Rachel Wood, I'll send her email around, also maintains a listserv where we send emails, updates about what all the subgroups are doing and what they've developed. Um, so if you wanted to know specifically what the enhancement subgroup has decided about enhancement grants, you can read that um, newsletter that comes out monthly to, to get some updates there. And so I'll share that link. Posted for public comment right now is the formula grant methodology. So how the state has determined the amount of money um, going into formula grants. And so I, that's a link to show how you can make public comment on that. 
It is, um, it's been developed through a lot of interactions with one of these subgroups, um, but it's certainly open for you to provide more feedback if you have um, thoughts on it. And finally, our listservs, and that's a link to our main Clean Water Initiative program page, is a great way to sort of stay up to date on upcoming grant opportunities. And as these tools get developed or trainings are coming up, that's sort of how we will be communicating to folks. So if you're not already on those listservs, we certainly recommend it um, to stay up to date with DEC Quip stuff. So I guess key takeaways to leave some time for comments and questions is that existing grant programs will persist for a few years, um, but the launching of formula and enhancement grants means there's going to be sort of new application procedures, new entities to be applying to for funds. Um, and I want to put that on everyone's radar to start to be tracking and following those pieces. The operation and maintenance funding pot may allow for new practitioner roles. And so that's something to be thinking about uh, if that makes sense for you. And that the listserv is a good way to stay up to date, although certainly not the only way to stay up to date on all of these moving pieces. And that's that. I will stop there and see if there's any questions. I guess, Dan, go ahead. You can do a follow up. I see your hand. Yeah, not so much a question, but just to reinforce uh, some of your points. So again, for the clean water service providers, and I'm, I'm, we're all kind of collaborating on our RFQ that's going to go out hopefully in the next month or so. And a couple of key things about this RFQ. One is we're looking to be broad as possible. We're not trying to winnow it down to three, three engineering firms or three tree planting firms or whatever. It's going to be very broad to kind of identify the skill sets and the interest level. Uh, out there. And we're really looking for firms, organizations, municipalities, anybody up. There's a lot of work to do. And there's, there's fortunately a lot of money. So we're really looking for people who are skilled at firms and organizations and individuals who are skilled at identification and development of water quality projects. Again, mostly that non-regulatory realm, um, working with landowners, uh, traditional engineering type firms in terms of design um, and project management. And also, and this is where organizations come into play, that real skill set of project oversight, project management, working with the landowners, working with the engineer, talking to the people with the big yellow machines or other machines to do projects. And then there's also a whole operations and maintenance component and verification that these projects um, are, are working the way they intended? Are the trees still living? Is the stream bank still being protected? Is the flood water accessing the floodplain, et cetera? So keep an eye out for that. Uh, it'll go out on vermontbidsystem.com. We'll blast it everywhere we can. And you will probably still see six to seven different ones, but they will all be very similar. And these are again for the Lake Champlain basins plus Lake Memphis Magog. Uh, but we really want to pre qualify. People, it'll make it easy for projects to access engineering firms and practitioners such as yourself, and hopefully also start to read it, build a stable of, of groups and, and firms that can collaborate because this is going to go on for a while. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate that. Uh, much further detail in the pre qualification process than I could provide. So thank you for that. And certainly, um, Dan's a great resource for questions. Uh, I, I see the chat. Should I just go through some of those, Allison? Um, yeah, that would be perfect. I, I was about to say that you could look in the chat for there are a couple of other questions. Um, okay. The first one might Great. be from Michelle Brown. Okay. Hey, Michelle. So you asked about the blossoming of inspection work. Can I say more about that? Sure. Uh, the um, So the DEC is developing a protocol for inspecting and verifying these clean water projects to make sure that they're still um, providing the service, the like pollution reduction services as projected. So there's an operation and maintenance manual that uh, Helen Carr has been working on, and there's a Act 76 subgroup to get feedback on that operation and maintenance manual. Um, Jill Sarazen is also working on that from UVMC grant. And that manual is going to sort of guide 
um, how these certain clean water projects should be maintained. So there's sort of different guidance based on whether it's a buffer planting or a dam removal project or a wetland restoration or a stormwater project. Um, it also informs a survey one, two, three tool and a phone app um, that's currently sort of in process uh, in development that is envisioned to be used by um, verifiers basically who will go out and verify, inspect and verify these installations. You know, the clean water service provider has installed, worked with partners to install a bunch of projects. And then these verifiers will go back, you know, year after year to make sure that they're still in good condition. They're not, you know, the uh, buffer planting, for example, isn't massively washed away. Um, and the survey one, two, three tool sort of uh, leads people through asking these kinds of questions and documenting that they are continuing to, um, provide the pollution reduction benefit. So I, I mentioned it because I want to make sure that if there are entities who are interested in serving that role and getting expertise and going out and inspecting and verifying projects uh, to put that on your radar, to, to be tracking the own manual, to be tracking some trainings that might be coming out in the realm of inspection and verification. Does that answer your question, Michelle? Yes, thanks, Sarah. Great, thanks. Ron, when and how do projects in the database get updated in terms of their status pending completed? Great question, Ron. Uh, it, it, uh, it kind of depends right now. I think there's a lot of envisioning that this will happen more regularly through formula grants. Um, that'll be sort of part of the updating coming back from clean water service providers as they report. You can kind of update the water service project database a bit more regularly. Right now, it's it depends on sort of what phase and how it's funded. So if it's a project that's a design phase project um, that's coming in through our design implementation block grant, it sort of depends on the schedule of when we get those that information reported back to us. And then when we pass that information over to the basin planners to update it. So sometimes it could be as frequently as quarterly. Sometimes it could take two years to get updated if it's the end of a uh, grant closeout. Um, so it's certainly not as uh, regular as we would like, but there's certainly some interest in making sure that formula grants can make that more regular moving forward. Does that answer what you're asking, Ron? Yes, thank you. Sure. 